Live from the heart of America, I'm Steve Drew, ready to deliver an inclusive and diverse discussion on the most important topics of the day, and I'll give you better analysis and insight than anyone else. I'm shining a spotlight into the swamp. Gosh, I don't know what we'll find, but we're going to look. Deliver the truth straight up. No sugarcoating here today. Three big things you need to know this day, this free-for-all Friday. Number one, a former staffer for President Barack Obama blowing the whistle on Joe Biden's illegal kickbacks on foreign money, starting with his crackhead kid, Hunter. Number two, in Michigan, firearms groups fighting back after not being allowed to testify during hearings that lead to massive gun control laws getting signed by the governor. It's all coming. And number three, it is Free For All Friday. We're going to dig deep into everything that happened this week and figure out why we are still such a, still such a massive skid we're in. First of all, the embarrassment. The man the government says leaked more than 100 classified documents has been arrested. I'll get to that in a few minutes. Mitch McConnell may never return to the United States Senate. I'll get to that, too. And Diane Feinstein, she might not be back either. I'll have an update. But I'm going to start with the horrible mass murder, this one in Louisville, Kentucky, where a 25-year-old guy with a master's degree unloaded on his fellow bank employees, killing five before getting gunned down by brave police officers on the scene. Sadly, one of those officers remains in critical condition. It is terribly sad. Senator Chris Murphy, he's now leading the charge to disarm all private citizens in America. He won't say it straight up, but I will, and he really does. Listen. Mass shootings every single day. There's over 100 people dying from gun violence. Many of those are suicides, homicides, accidental shootings. So every single day there's mass slaughter in this country, and it doesn't happen anywhere else in the high-income world besides the United States. But I think you are right. I mean, we are seeing a paradigm shift. It began last summer when after Uvalde, Congress passed the first gun safety measure of any significance in 30 years, uh, even though the NRA uh, opposed that legislation. And it continues now this spring is you see a very conservative Republican governor, Bill Lee, uh, proposing uh, that the legislature pass a red flag law, again, a measure that the NRA doesn't like. But red flag laws are not insignificant. They really do work. Um, in Florida, that passed their red flag law shortly after Parkland. They've used it 6,000 times to take guns away from people who are threatening harm against others or threatening harm against themselves. Uh, so it's good news that you see Republicans like Bill Lee stepping up and saying it's time for us to do something. Um, I think you're going to have more and more states, red states and blue states acting for one reason and one reason only. Um, voters are not going to allow politicians to stand by and do nothing. Yeah, so that's where we are on the gun debate. By the way, red flag laws passed in Michigan yesterday. There'll be some adjustments on it, but it's all headed to Governor Gretchen Whitmer's desk Crackdown on law-abiding gun owners is happening in Michigan at a lightning speed. It's only going to get worse. And, but that's what they want federally. Make no mistake, when Gretchen Whitmer runs for president, which she will, these are some of the things they're going to pursue. They want this to happen. They want to make sure that you are disarmed as soon as possible. Not, oh, this is for hunting. Remember, when they were coming back from Lexington and Concord, they were coming home from hunting camp. They weren't coming back from deer camp, all right? They're coming back from a revolution. On MSNBC, they're telling the truth now as we shift gears on this free-for-all Friday. We're just going to go through everything, all right? They're telling the truth about how concerned people are about the economy. Are you concerned? I am. Listen to this. I think the best I can say is that there's a, a, a lag effect, and we've had a tough economy for a long time, including during COVID, that people still aren't feeling economically secure, feeling like they're in good shape. And, and, none, and even though people at the bottom are doing better, as I said, you're still talking about people earning $35,000 or less, not a lot of money in an economy that has just been through a really tough inflationary period. But that's the challenge for incumbent politicians to convince the voters that they're actually uh, on the case and trying to make things better. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Uh, they're, they're not making anything better. In fact, uh, many experts now say that that long-awaited recession is upon us, starting now. We'll see what happens. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm, speaking of governors of Michigan, she was a peach, says that green energy, think about this, I want, you, I want you to hear this, will account for $23 trillion a year, which is remarkable. 
considering that is the entire GDP in America. Like I've often said, Democrats can't do math. Actually, they suck at it. Listen to this. I would want to wake up with a job in the clean energy sector, which is going to be about $23 trillion, according to Bloomberg, by 2030. Why shouldn't we be pushing to have a, to corner the market in that clean energy economy and create jobs in every pocket of America, doing the kind of work that your kids and my kids want to do to help, you know, yes, protect the planet, but also provide reliable, secure energy for America. Yeah, okay. Look, Jen, math not your strong suit because $23 trillion in the green energy sector, that's our entire GDP. But, heck, how do you figure that out? Oh, I don't know. Google it like I did. <laughs> Woo, really high brow stuff. She says, by the way, we're on our way to net zero. We're going to a net zero world. You know, so if you don't want an EV, that's fine. You don't have to have one. You can walk. Listen. Well, everything else you see this administration doing is accelerating the push to clean. And know, know that we are in a transition. So you can't just flip a switch and go from a fossil fuel energy country to a renewable energy country. That's just not possible because the technology is not ready, the, the infrastructure is not ready. So it's a transition. That's why the goal is to get to a net zero carbon emitting economy by 2050. It's, that's still years ahead. We have to have this be a smart managed transition. We, don't, we, we know we, gas, gasoline is going to be around for a good number of years in the future. So we have to produce that. And we don't want to choke off supply so that price goes up either. So it's managing the current situation so that people's prices are not going high by using fossil fuels, but also really accelerating this push to clean, which ultimately is cheaper and cleaner and more secure. Oh, by the way, electric cars, when it comes to insurance, are going to be far more expensive. Why? You can't repair the batteries. If you're in a collision and an accident, you can't, you can't fix any of that. They're really expensive. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, I like the word fuel. Fuel. Fossil fuel. You don't refer to windmills as fuel, do you? Solar panels, you ever refer to that as fuel? Fueling up. Putting the fuel into the rocket. Doing it. No, you don't, do you? I mean... Fuel is what America needs. Massive amounts of fuel to fuel the economy, to fuel our push forward, to fuel who we are. Fuel. Anyhow, I've got a, a, a liberal confession about media bias when we come back. It's actually pretty good. I'm going to give credit to somebody from the Young Turks, believe it or not. No, I've not lost my mind. It is Friday, but I've not lost my mind. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. It's the Steve Gerber Show.